Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another beautiful Monday, excuse me, a Wednesday with us on Live with Lloyd. I'm your host, astronumerologist Lloyd Strayhorn on this 27th of March of 2024 with the year, of, of, I should say with the month of March, actually over uh, this time next week. Um, I want to uh, thank all of you, all of you who are joining. I am going to be doing sessions today. Uh, let me get this straight. Hold on. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Master Numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn. Um, I have quite a bit to talk about today. Yes, I will be doing readings too. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Uh, I want to thank my moderator, uh, Empress Rel, for uh, moderating the show this evening. I may not be able to get to everybody, but I'm going to do the best I can. But there's a couple of things I want to let you know. And this time next week, we'll be in the month of April. Now, on Monday, I'm having an astrologer on Kalia Washington. She's a solar biologist. There's another term she now uses. It escapes me. But the point is um, that April is going to be a crazy month, according to the stars. Okay events that are taking place. Uh, first of all, as you know, April Fool's Day is taking place on the 1st. Uh, supposedly, in theory, it's supposed to come from people who would play jokes on each other because the time shift, you know, when you spring forward or jump or fall backwards or, yeah, fall backwards, spring forward, that what happens is when there's a change, sometimes it throw people off. They think it's this day and it's that day. They think it's this time and it's that time. So nowadays they call it pranks. Uh, that's what they call it nowadays. But more importantly, on that day, Mercury will go retrograde. And it will go retrograde from April the 1st through April the 25th. Now, when Mercury goes retrograde, first of all, Mercury rules the planet of communications, the planet of the mind. It also has rulership over Gemini in the air sign and Virgo in the earth sign. Or if you were born on the 5th, the 14th, or the 23rd of the month. Well, when Mercury is retrograde, as my host on Monday, Clear Washington, will explain, this is when things get a little fouled up, a little kind of backwards, a little, I thought you said this, no, I thought you said that. And this is when any, all communications disasters, technology disasters will take place when a Mercury is retrograde. On the 15th of uh, April, I'm, as I told you, I am going to have Jazz Aphrodite on talking about her book, her latest book that's coming out. But before, and I'll get to my uh, sponsors in a moment and the forecast. In fact, let me do that now. Uh, the show is back and being sponsored by uh, Jazz Aphrodite. She's having a master numerology class or master class on her birthday, April the 20th. So we'll be sure to give her a birthday shout out. But she is the sponsor please go to sign up at jazzaphrodite.com at the very bottom, register and get in. She is a excellent, excellent astronumerologist. Also, uh, Miss Kimberly with Manifest on Purpose each Monday and Wednesday, she does her podcast dealing with the subconscious mind, what motivates us to do what we do and things like that. And uh, so that's a show I recommend. In fact, I also sponsor the show as she's sponsoring my show. Um, also, on the 13th and the 14th, King Simon will be in the house here in Brooklyn, New York City at Nicholas Brooklyn at 1396 Fulton Street uh, with the good brother King Simon and these beautiful sisters. And then the following day, I will be appearing there as well. All righty, uh, with uh, 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 Miss Moore and, um, well, anyway, I'll be appearing there, okay? Anyway, uh, let me do the forecast and get this get this done, okay? And then we'll get right to it. Today is March 27th, a Wednesday. The sun is in Aries. The moon went into Scorpio at about five something this morning. It's 11 universal month, a six universal week, 11 universal days. So Leos, Aquarians, and Cancers in the house or those born on the 2nd, the 7th, the 11th, the 16th, the 20th, the 25th, the 29th of the month. Well, this is should be a very interesting day for you. All righty. So now getting back to uh, what I wanted to say, 
is um so yeah march is march according to the the heavenly planet the heavenly celestial guidance will be going through a phase that doesn't occur too often um i was explaining that on the 15th of april of next month will mark 112 years that the titanic sunk in the ocean and that mercury was not only in retrograde but there was all also a solar eclipse so i'm going to take part of that april 15th to talk about that because when i talk about technology disasters and communications disasters on the day the titanic just before it hit the iceberg they had received six warnings six and for some reason they never got it in fact the ship that was closest to the titanic they could have saved like I think about 16, 13, 1600 passengers were lost. Uh, they never got the signal, but the ship that was furthest away that took forever in the day to get there, by the time they got there, an overwhelming majority of the uh, passengers on board were lost. Such is Mercury retrograde. And the reason why I'm saying that, because on April the 1st, there will start on Monday, Mercury retrograde for the next 21 days. It always occurs three times a year. Uh, so. The next one is going to be after that on August the 4th through August the 28th. And the third and last one for the year will be on November 25th uh, and ending on February the 15th. All of them are taking place under the fire sign. All righty. So what happens is last Monday or just this past Monday, there was a lunar eclipse. Now, eclipses, let me explain as best I can in my term. I'm no expert, but uh, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. A lunar eclipse is when the earth comes in between the sun and the moon, okay? And it casts a shadow that gives it that effect. The solar eclipse takes place when the moon comes in between the earth and the sun, okay? That's the only difference. The moon and the earth switch positions. So when it's a lunar, that means the earth is getting in between the moon and the sun and when it's a solar the moon is getting in between the earth and the sun okay and of all the planets to go retrograde the sun never goes retrograde that's the only planet in the heavens jupiter mars saturn neptune pluto you name it they all go retrograde the only planet that doesn't go retrograde is the sun but that makes sense okay so anyway that's what's going to be going on. And so on the 15th, I'm going to take part of that day to talk about it because there were so many mishaps that took place 112 years ago on the sinking of the Titanic. But what was also interesting is that a lot of people don't know that that was on the 14th and the 15th of the sinking of the Titanic in that year, 1912. Well, two days later on a Wednesday, there was a solar eclipse and the Titanic was supposed to arrive in New York City on the 17th of April, which happened to have been J.P. Morgan's birthday, who happened to have owned the White Star Line that who had happened to own the Titanic. Go figure. All righty. So now let me tell you what's going on on the 8th of April. All righty. On the 8th of April, we're having what is called a phenomenon that doesn't take place too often, which is a, they call it a totality. In other words, there's going to be a total solar eclipse that's going to take place on April the 8th. Now, what makes it interesting is going to take place in the sign of Aries. Then it's going to take place on a new moon day when the moon is in the sign of Aries too. But we'll, let, me, let me digress just back a second about this lunar eclipse that took place on Monday. The peak of the lunar eclipse this past Monday on the 25th took place about 3 a.m. in the morning. Well, less than 24 hours later, there was a 95 ton barge that bumped into the bridge of the Baltimore Bridge and collapsed it. Okay. Unfortunately, there were a few passengers, there were a few drivers on that bridge when it collapsed. They said sonar signals had picked up cars underneath. There were six workers that hasn't been recovered yet that were working on the bridge, but that took place. Now, it's interesting. It took place on a Monday which governs the moon, okay? And so the moon has 
things to do with the tides. They're going to probably tell you that the tides had a lot to do with it. And speaking of the communications, don't forget, it doesn't start on April the 1st. Astrologers will tell you there's always a shadow several days before, several days after. This 95-ton um, uh, ship, freighter ship that hit the bridge ran out of power. Now, and they were heading to somewhere across the across the globe, but yet they ran out of power. So this is what I'm saying. So there's a lot of things that are happening that's going to be kind of crazy. And then Mars, which governs Aries, means being very careful of arguments, accidents, things of that nature. Uh, let me tell you, people's tempers flare. So I'm just telling my Live with Lloyd family to please be very mindful that if you like kind of snap at something or getting short or please, please until April's over until we at least go into the sign of Taurus to kind of really, really take it easy. But with this lunar solar eclipse is taking place. There's a couple of things. First of all, it's one that's rare. There are four types of eclipses. One is partial eclipse, annual eclipse, solar eclipse, and a lunar eclipse. Well, this one is a lunar eclipse. It will start in the, it starts in Mexico, but in the United States, it will start in Texas at 2.37 Eastern Standard Time, which is 1.27 their time, Central Standard Time. And it will end in Maine at 3.33 p.m. So it's gonna be a total of 68 minutes from the time it hits the United States till the time it ends its presence in Maine. There are gonna be several cities along the way that it's gonna be getting more of the impact and when there's a solar eclipse, it's like there is, it's almost like it's dark time, like the sun is settling or just before the sun is about to rise. So if in the middle of the day, you're looking up, oh, and by the way, please don't look up. I'm going to explain that in a moment too. Because of the fact that the moon is blocking or it's in between the earth and the sun and therefore will cast a shadow. So therefore it would appear as if the Earth, the sun rather, is being darkened, and it is to a point. The most critical time is called a diamond eclipse. The diamond eclipse is when there is a phase where it's just about to get to the tip of getting into the sun and ending the sun too. Uh, the phase lasts, uh, when you do pass through your region, about four minutes and 20 something seconds. That's all it is. Now, though it's gonna be a span covering the United States in 68 minutes, when it is in your area, like Philadelphia, for example, if you live in the Philadelphia area, that's going to cover about 90% of the darkness of the sun. All right. But it's going to start in Texas, actually. And uh, there are certain cities that will be uh, seen, such as uh, Arkansas and also in Missouri, also in Indiana. I got some of the cities also in Lima and Cleveland, Ohio. So you live in Cleveland or Lima, Ohio, you can uh, do that also Erie, Pennsylvania, of course, Philadelphia, Buffalo and Niagara, New York, and um, Quebec, Canada. And it's going to end in Mars Hill in Maine. OK, those will be some of the states and some of the cities that is going to take place. Now, what should you not do? The one thing they tell you, if nothing else, you should not look at the sun. Now, I did an interview not too long ago that's going to be out. And I was explaining to people, this is no joke. It's, it's, it's one thing on a bright sunny day when you're looking at the sun and your eyes are squinting, you got to put on some shades. The eclipse is a whole different animal. And you can, in fact, they call it e uh, uh, eclipse blindness or blindness e eclipse. Meaning that if you try to be cute and look at that sun or that eclipse coming up on the eighth without any benefit of some protective glasses, you could permanently damage your eyes and in some cases to the extreme go blind. So for example, there are certain glasses you should wear. One of the things is don't look at the eclipse. It says don't eat, don't drink, no physical exercise and don't sleep during that period. Now I'm curious and hopefully by the eighth, I'll find out why that is. Why can't you eat? Why can't you sleep? Why can't you drink or anything of that nature or get into some physical activity? So what it will tell me if that is the case, and I will try to find out why that is in terms of the don't category, that either you do it by, say, since it's about on the East Coast, try to try to find, end up by 
which will give you at least an hour before the eclipse starts to make its presence felt in the United States, or wait until after four o'clock or four thirty when the last effect has passed through the state of Maine. All right. Now, one of the things to do is you stay at home, you stay in a state of prayer and reflection. Uh, you visualize what your intentions are, what you want to do. These are some of the spiritual aspects. It's like a time to reset, to reboot, to kind of go into an introspective. And it also denotes major changes that you want to put forth in your life too. That you can take advantage of the eclipse. Now, I will say this, like the lunar eclipse that took place on Monday, the 25th of March, and the solar eclipse that's going to take place on the 8th of April, there is a ripple effect, which means it's like throwing a, a pebble or a rock in the middle of a pond. And although it's in the middle of the pond, way out in the center, there is a ripple effect that generally will come to shore. So just because Mercury goes retrograde, it's going to last 21 days. Eclipses last a while, whether it's solar or lunar. So just because it's like, okay, it's April 8th, it's all over. It's not over. It's not over. And especially since we're in the period of, of Aries, which is ruled by the most assertive planet on the planet, which is Mars itself, denoting war, guns, confrontations, knives, confrontations, car accidents, explosions, dangers from firearms and sharp instruments. This month of April coming up is no joke. So it, I'm just saying it because, you know, these are some of the things, by the way, when I say don't look up, um, these are very popular now. These are some of the glasses that you can get. Now, they are warning about getting fake glasses. They should be certified glasses from the ISO, and it should be labeled 12312-2. Those are certified glasses, okay? Now, if you don't like those glasses, you can get a little bit more conservative type of glasses, okay? You can get the kind of glasses that can fit over your own eyeglasses if you're going to look up at the sun. But please don't try to look up in the sun and be cute about it. No, don't even put on the welder's mask. You know, when they, they are soldering and all that stuff and they handle it, you know, with the hot uh, instruments and whatnot. No, don't be cute. No, don't. Your shades are not going to work either. Don't look at it through a mirror. This is it. Now, also, this is where you can get it in a pack. This is a case where you can get 100 of these solar eclipse glasses uh, for that kind of money there. But basically what they used to do, believe it or not, libraries in the United States used to give out eclipse glasses. OK, so check with your local library. I know what they used to do. Things have kind of changed a little bit. OK, um, people used to be nice and not as nice as they used to be. I'm not talking about libraries. I'm just talking about things in general nowadays that seem to be the way the energy is pushing. But what I'm saying is check with your local library. Do you have solar glasses available? If not, ask them. You have up until about another another week and change before the eclipse does come. So this way, out of curiosity, in fact, there's some uh, department store that's closing two of their branches around the country so their employees can go out and look up at the sun. But they better have some glasses on. This is no joke, okay? So now that I've got that out the way, I don't mean to sound doom and gloom, but I just want to tell you this too. Another thing I want to mention is uh, people have asked me and I have decided to give a course and this is going to be the course It's going to be numbers you and beyond It's going to be a workshop learning the art of numerology as a career. I really mean that people ask, can you make a living from doing this? Yes, is the answer to the question. Now, it's not going to, and the day I came up, it was like, are you serious? OK, nowadays, fast forward this 21st century. It is quite easy to do. They have astrological courses. They give certifications and whatnot, but they normally don't do this in terms of, and I've got, I teach a course now that's all around the planet um, in 30 languages, over, over 100 countries, in fact. And, um, but that's to teach them, but to teach them to make this as a career, all right? This is something. So for those of you who are interested and doing this, and you got to be serious. I, I'm only taking a very small amount of students. I'm not joking. This ain't no whole bunch of people up in here. It's not going to be that way. It's going to be a very select few. And if you're really interested and think you want to do this for a living, I got a letter from an email from a Quinetta, 
uh, who's been doing this. She even took the course, but she wants to do this. Please send it to at the bottom, a star eight LLC at Gmail. It's about uh, numbers you and beyond workshop is learning the art of numerology as a career, which I am going to teach you. And um, I think you're going to find a lot of fun. You're going to find it challenging too. But if you're interested, write to a star eight LLC at gmail.com, a star eight LLC at gmail.com. Let me know you're interested. Well, I'm going to send you out a survey questions. You know, it ain't about, oh, I want to do this. There's certain requirements you're going to have within yourself. Uh, naturally, to have a natural talent toward it uh, and being persistent. It, this, is, this, is, this is not easy. Had somebody told me decades ago that, Lloyd, you'd make your living doing this, I would I'd, 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 I'd hurt their feelings. No, I don't know how you're going to do that. But now with this technology, now that we're in the age of Aquarius, which is technology and metaphysics and things like that, it is quite easy to do. And I have the experience, the background, the expertise to teach you how to do it. All you got to do is follow instructions. And I, I can't do no more than that. I ain't going to hold your hand because then you can't make a career of it if I'm holding your hand. All right. So now that I got all that out the way, I'm going to start taking people's comments, people's questions. And I want to thank everybody very, very much. And I hope you please understand the importance of this lunar eclipse that we just had this just two days ago. And notice yesterday morning, a, 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 a barge weighing 95 tons. That's a whole lot of weight hit, hit the brakes. And that, and I don't know whether you saw the video, but the, the bridge collapsed as if it was like cards, you know, and, and, you know, my heart really went out for those that were on the bridge at that time that went into the water and whatnot. So it's, you know, what I'm saying is please be careful folks. And then with Mercury being retrograde on the first, the solar eclipse coming up, I'm just saying, don't let people, you know, ruffle your feathers. Don't, don't do that. Just now, at least on this show and try to tell your family members, your friends, even your frenemies too. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm looking at. So I want to thank everybody that's uh, uh, timing in. And um, so just give me your name, your birthday. And man, maybe you got a question about this. If not, I can, if I can't answer it, I'll save it for my astrologer guest. that's going to come on Monday, clear Washington, who's going to be talking about Mercury retrograde and probably knowing her to talk about the eclipse too. All righty. And then I'm going to have some people on, but I'm just going down the list to make sure I don't need anybody. Okay. And all of you need, all of you leave nice, nice responses such as this. And I mean, I'm just very, very fortunate. This is now, this is one of my favorites here. Now I'm partial to Dr. Yana B. Woodhouse because she tells you about the money. And she did ask, how do we be prepared? One, make sure you get some glasses. Don't be looking up there. One, also to be at peace. Three or four, don't eat, don't drink, no physical exercise, and don't go to sleep. Why that is, I don't know. But I know there's a reason for everything on this planet Earth. And I, for one, tend to find out by the time we reach the solar eclipse on the 8th. Okay? That's for sure. But that's a good question. And I got to have her back on this think Food is crazy. Rent is crazy. Everything is kind of like, what is going on? Okay. Uh, uh, this is Quinetta. Quinte Quin Quintella, not Quintella. Quintella. Uh, she's the one that expressed. Now, that makes sense to me. Here's why I'm saying it astrologically. She's an Aquarius, which is this is the kind of age we're in. She's a number born on the 31st, which is a four, which rules the sign of Aquarius. So the number four is in its natural home. And uh, she happens to be in a four personal year, a year where she's laying the cornerstone, the blueprint, the foundation, the groundwork for doing the things she needs to do. Uh, by signs, Aquarians are known to be kind of like contrary. They don't mean to be contrary. They're just a little stubborn. You know, they tend to do just the opposite of what you tell them to do, but they're fixed signs. And uh, with her born on the fourth, so she said her son is in Aquarius, her moon is in Pisces, which is the psychic sign in the zodiac, which means she'll probably do very, very well should she took my course or any other course. Uh, but she did send me a request, and I think we've acknowledged it. Thank you, Contella. Um, I hope you could join us. 
but there are questionnaires that we, you're going to fill out because you got to see, do you have the right temperament? You got to have some persistence. This is no joke. If you're going to do this for a living, I ain't going to have you talking bad about Lloyd Strayhorn. That's for sure. Okay. I mean, I, I take what I do for very, very seriously. This is how I raised and fed my family and my children. So I am dead earnest about making sure that if you're going to have me or entrust in me to make sure you're learning this as a career, you will do just that. Okay. So anyway, thank you very, very much for that. And uh, by the way, your numbers are the four, one, and five. And your best days are always on a Sunday and a Monday and a Wednesday like today. And fours are so different. Uh, they do. Um, okay. So anyway, thanks for all these nice words and stuff like that. Uh, um, thank you, English Toffee. She says this is the first time she's watching the live. So thanks very much for joining us. Um, and I got to thank my... my uh, my moderator, Empress Rel. And Plaza, by the way, I'm, I'm I'm beginning to finally, after going on two two years with doing this, two and a half years of doing this, rather, to tell people to leave comments. Evidently, comments that you leave have something to do with the algorithm. So it's nice to leave comments here, but leave comments in the chat room or wherever they tell you to leave it at. Anyway, anyway, I've, I've, I've got a lot to learn. Um, okay. Anyway, let's see. Hi, Keisha Williams. Thank you very, very much. And oh, here we go. Uh, Nicholas Noel, Noel, all righty, uh, from Trinidad. Um, he is born 10, 10, 82. Okay, so if I look at it, it's a 10, a 10, and a 20. 10 in the tarot deck is called the Wheel of Fortune. It denotes one whose plans are likely to be carried out. It's also known for good or evil. So if you take the more good side of this, Noel, I would say you would do very well. Not only that, but then you're born in the year of, of uh, 20, uh, 1982, which adds up to 20. And this is called the awakening, which means toward the end of your life, one of your main goals, if nothing else, is to raise people's consciousness. In the conscious community, they used to call it your kundalini, okay? But to make people aware of things around them and things of that nature. The year you were born, in fact, uh, you can see, which is none of my business, okay, October, November, December, <laughs> you, would, you would concede the January of 1981, which adds up to 19, which adds up to 10. So really, you would concede in 10, 10, well, you were born on 10, 10, but you was conceived in a year that added up to a 10 in uh, uh, January. And your mom would probably say, yeah, how you know who told you that? Uh, but anyway, th there's a technique. See, these are some of the techniques I'll teach people about careers that makes it. Now, I make when I'm on this platform and other shows and whatnot, I make it entertaining because I've been doing this so long in the entertainment world of radio and television. So I'm used to that. But when people read my books, they know this stuff is no joke. It's very, very serious. But at any rate, your numbers are the 149. You have leadership numbers, so you have no excuse not to follow your dreams. People who are number ones normally make your lawyers, your doctors, your scientists, your entrepreneurs, your innovators, your futurists, uh, things of that nature. And uh, as I say, they jokingly, as this little as TV series one says, they go where no man has gone before. And it tells me you are an original thinker and you were probably out on your own between your 19th and 22nd birthday. OK, thank you very, very much. OK. Um, yeah, I have to agree with. Uh, Locust at last, uh, locks at last. Uh, you know, it's one thing to see the video of that barge that hit the uh, Baltimore Bridge, but it collapsed so like, like it was nothing, like it was nothing. And my heart just went out for those. So we never know when the creator's gonna call us home. And they did say there were about five or six cars beneath that the solar, solar signals picked up. Um, so it's, it's just unfortunate, but these are the things that happens when these eclipses occur. And it means to be mindful and careful, not paranoid. There's a difference. Not paranoid where you can't get out and you can't look out the window and all that stuff. I'm just saying go out with situational awareness. Don't go out with your head all in your phone looking at and bumping in the poles and doing things you, you know, what's happening. Here in New York, uh, for example, uh, since we've gone into areas about three or four people have been pushed on the subway tracks 
one just recently as within the last 24 hours and killed, unfortunately. Now it's crazy, it's, but this is either the kind of environment we're in or the kind of energy we're having. And again, it's not to make you paranoid, but make you aware, pay attention. That call, it's going, if it's going to be all right, they'll, you know, if it's emergency, they'll leave a text or a note or something of that nature. But pay attention when you are out and about the next month. Actually, all the time when you're out and about with people being snatched or whatever the case they call it. Please pay attention. You only got one of you and you want to do that. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, we have uh, uh, Jelena. It's so interesting because her birthday is on November the 25th, which is the last Mercury retrograde of the year 2024 under the five sign of Sagittarius, which this she is. So Jelena, it indicates you are a blend of fire and water, passion, okay, and yet sensitivity, being proactive and yet deeply, deeply intuitive, very much confident and yet having a mind of your own or a strongly marked individuality. This is an interesting combination to have. It also indicates that this year for you is a year where it's a power year. And in fact, looking at the cycle in the year you're in of 1994, you happen to be in a pregnancy cycle too, and a marital cycle. And the pregnancy cycle doesn't have to be biological because don't forget, numbers speak in symbols. When you go to a doctor and they take your blood pressure, those numbers speak symbolically that, okay, you need some medicine, you're doing real good with your diet, nutrition, all that other stuff. So that's how it is. But this is your year to make some very dynamic power moves, no question. Your key numbers, by the way, are the seven, the two and the three and your best days are always on a monday first um uh, a monday a thursday and a friday those would be your days okay and if you download my app of star eight you'll see that there are numbers that stress you too i never talk about the numbers that stress you because for some reason human nature we tend to look more at what's stressing us <laughs> than what's to our benefit so we need to begin to change gears okay uh cosmic sunflower hot Hindsight, astrology, numerology, cardiology, and intuitions are really gifts to see the past and the future. Yes, this is why kings, queens, presidents, heads of governments, from Napoleon to Hitler to Ronald Reagan to, I mean, to they all use it. They all use it as far back because, in fact, and when uh, well, Alexander the Great was in the Chaldean 356 BC, they told him then that the knowledge of these sciences, these metaphysical sciences they're not pseudosciences there, there was a hater that made that up it's it's two plus two is four that's not a pseudoscience that's an exact science that's how it works but they will say that these things are pseudosciences so i don't know who they're trying to fool but i'm telling you these are ancient african sciences because if you look at where alexander the great was in chaldea chaldea was in egypt and egypt is on the continent of africa i mean let us put some logic up in this piece okay so that's all I'm doing. Again, I'm not trying to take nothing from nobody. But I'm not letting nobody take anything from us. It's just that simple. And I don't see why there can't be a collective that we all make contributions on this planet. I have no problems with that. But to take away from what we do and in our greatness. Um, well, anyway. Uh, yes. And it really does give you the, the, uh, the power to see in the present as well as the future. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, one of my favorites, Sister Maya uh, Virgo, born on the 13th of September. Yes, I have favorites. Yes, I have Carolyn and um, and a wonderful husband, Brother Williams, out of Chicago. And let me see. This is, uh, okay. Now, this is Eartha Pierce. She says, I live right across from that. I'm in the Pasadena area in my front door facing the bridge. Wow. She can, she can see that the bridge is no longer there. Wow, Earth appears. That must be, you know, it's one thing to see something on, on, on a screen, a movie, or whatever, but to actually be right across from the bridge, and that bridge is no longer there, which it was, and that's a major bridge, from what I understand. It connects, I think, Delaware into Delaware into Baltimore or something like that. You got to cross that bridge. I think that's the same bridge, but uh, at any rate. Um, yeah. So again, my heart goes out for all of those in that any disaster, because we only have one life. So do try to make the best of your life and not take it for granted. Yes, we're stressed with food and yes, we're stressed with rents and mortgages and everything like that. 
but at least you get up in the morning and that alone you count your blessings for, okay? Um, um, this is a Darius uh, Asuma, uh, born on July the 29th of 1998. Uh, can't wait to explore and get into numerology. Uh, thank you for the gift. No, I thank the creator for giving me this gift. This is why I do stay in a state of honesty and appreciation. Just as he gave me this gift, I be, as my mother used to say, smelling myself, and he could take this gift away where I said two plus two is eight, and we know that ain't the math, okay? So what I'm saying is that in your case, you are a Leo two person, and what it simply means, you are a blend of also fire and water. You are a fire sign with a water number, which means on one hand, from the fire element, very proactive, very energized, a go-getter, things of that nature, yet your numbers and modifies it or shades it with patience and understanding, kindness and consideration. And your birthday too, Darius, tells me either work around a lot of women or women have been very important in your life in some way, shape or form, whether a mother or sister or grandmother and auntie or a coworker. And either you work around a lot of women or you would have women supervisors or whatever the case is. But I can tell you this, you're either very finicky about your eating habits as a child you would do well in the mechanical, mathematical sciences, computers, technology, engineering, and things of that nature. And you would also do well in counseling people, such as a social worker or therapist or counselor or uh, nurse or whatever the case is, uh, hygienist, uh, things of that nature. And um, this is your year since you are July 29th. That means you're in an eight personal year this year. And born in 1998, that means this is a year to make serious commitments toward a relationship, but make serious commitments toward building your career. That's for sure. That's for sure. And, and, and any Leah will tell you they're the greatest sign on the planet anyway, so you ain't got no argument out of me, although I think other signs are. But we're all entitled to how we feel. And every single one of you should feel that you're the, best, the most special person on this planet because you really are. It's just what your attitude and how you think of yourself and that I cannot do for you. It took me a while to get my stuff together. Okay. So anyway, um, let's see. Okay. Uh, this is a good question. Rena Rogers says, is there anything beneficial that they can do during eclipse to strengthen the connection? Yes. This is one of the connections of the eclipse. They don't talk about is the more spiritual side of it. Normally, this is when you can make major life changes, okay? That's one of the first things that's happening. It's, it's like going for a makeover on yourself, you know? And that's why one sits in either prayer or meditation or, or uh, solitude, but to give things. And don't forget, it's only 68 minutes from beginning to end, from 2.37 Eastern Standard Time to 3.33, where it ends in Maine. And if you can understand that and but the attention span, people can't sit still for five seconds. You know, they got, they got these things where you got to push the button to skip. Well, all you got to do is just be prepared. And that's one of the things. And in, in that period, since it starts at 2.37 Eastern Standard Time, you can begin to take stock of what you want, what your intentions are, what you plan to do with your life and where you want it to go forward. OK, and, and definitely stay in a state of thanks. Because there's a whole lot of people that's going to get up on the 8th that ain't going to get up, all righty? And the fact that you'll get up, hopefully all of us will, this in, in the Live with Lloyd family that's viewing this this evening, and you give thanks and whatnot. And, it's, and also, it's like, it gives you a time to make a reset, to reboot, to rethink, to refresh yourself. Take advantage of that. That's the spiritual connections they talk about. They talk about more some of the drama that goes on, which is true. But then there's a spiritual component to it as well. And don't forget, what is it? The sun. The sun is the fire. The sun rules spirit. The sun brings warmth to every part of this planet Earth at some point. So if you can think of it like that, that's how you take advantage of it. And it's a very good question. That's how you strengthen your connection. But more importantly, strengthen the connections with yourself. Now, what about sun gazing? Denzel, let me tell you this. You may have missed the first part. You can look at the sun if you want to. But brother, if you ain't got no glasses on, uh, you might you might be walking around with a cane after that. I'm serious. They're, they're warning people, do not, do not look at the sun. Now, you know how you got some people say, uh, don't do this and they're going to do that anyway? Well, you can do that if you want to. But on my show, it can't be said, we did not have this conversation. Get some glasses. And again, in case you missed it, 
Uh, you can get glasses from Amazon. You can get, and, and by the way, they're going to be selling glasses on the street too. Okay. But they should be, hold on. Let me do this. Let me, let me do this comment off a second. Um, okay. There, the ISO, the ophthalmologist uh, organization suggests that you should get certified glasses and you will know because the code is 12312-2. All righty. Now this is for like kids or whatever the case is. But if you want to look a little bit more like, you know, with some, some pizzazz to it, you can get something like this, you know, uh, they, you can get them individually as well as uh, in groups too. And so for those, somebody who wants to donate to the community or whatever, you can get them in a set. This is a hundred in a pack that you give out to friends and loved ones or neighbors or whatever the case is. But as I was saying, technically, they used to have these glasses available in the public libraries across the country. Some may have it, some may not, you know, with budget cuts and everything like that. So don't depend, don't wait to the last minute, but Darius, please do not do no sun gazing. Do you, Gaze on another day, but <laughs> don't gaze at the sun on that day, not without the proper air, I mean, eye apparel to protect your eyes, okay? Because it's no joke, man. You don't want to say, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's too late then, okay? So, I mean, why go through that? Um, yes, uh, the Mystic Cancer says the solar eclipse is happening at 2.37 p.m. on the Eastern Time. Well, see, and in Texas, they're one hour behind. So it's 127 their time. But if we look on the East Coast or Eastern Standard Time, it'd be 237. All righty. And so it's going to go all the way through Texas, Maine, Missouri, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, you know, uh, Niagara, Buffalo, New York. Then it's going to go up into Maine. But it's, it's going to last from 237 in the afternoon to 3.33 for a total of 68 minutes. And each part of the country that it hits, each city, the darkness will last for a period of about four minutes and um, four minutes and 20 something seconds. Now on August the 21st of, 2000, of 2027, a couple of years from now, it will be one of the longest that takes place. And that, that, that phase will last for a total of six minutes and about 30 seconds. The longest this ever occurred was back in 735 or 739 BC, okay, on October, on June the 15th of 739 or 736. I know, I know we wasn't even thought about at that time, but that took place about, I think, um, about nine minutes and per second there, every time it reached that phase of the country. So that's how long it takes, okay? But this one, now, the shortest was back on August the 21st of 2017, and the shadow was shorter. This time around, the shadow is wider, so it's going to cover more space on the planet. All right, so that's where some of the difference comes in. All right, anyway, good question. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, this person, Goldie Lee, uh, July 18th, her path is a six. What should she do around the eclipse? That is, take it easy. Eat, eat before the time of the phase starts of the eclipse or eat after. That would be between, again, 2.37 Eastern Standard Time and three up until 3.33 Eastern Standard Time, a total of 68 minutes. If you live in Texas, that's different because that's, that's an hour difference, okay? So uh, please uh, do that. I don't know why this says uh, don't sleep, don't eat, don't know physical exercises, don't drink, you know? But if that is the case, and my goal is, see, the way I think, I hear what you're saying, but why is that? That's what I want an answer to. So that's what I got to go down the rabbit hole to find out, first of all, who said this? Is this true? Or is this just some, you know, where people make things up, myths, as they call them, and these things like that. But, but the fact of being in a state of prayer and reflection and thoughts and, you know, really figuring out what you're doing and what your intentions are in this unique period that doesn't come often, I can agree with that one. I, I don't even have to, you know, do no research on that. There are things that you hear that sometimes just makes absolute sense. All righty. Um, but that's it. Take it easy. But I tell you this, you get along better with males than females. I tell you that right now. And look at all those eights, July 18th, 1988. 
So that means you're an old soul, Goldie Lee. You're an old spirit, biologically young in that sense, but spiritually old in another sense. And it just simply means to be more philosophical. And this year, you're in a sixth personal year. So your personal year is actually matching the month, the day, and the year you're born, which tells me you're in the sixth grade in the school of life. Good for losing weight, good for falling in love, good for falling out of love, good for going back to school or whatever the case is. And you should wear lots of blue from the lightest to the darkest. Although red, no, although born on the 18th is a nine, they normally like to attract those colors that are very assertive, like reds and you know golden yellows and things of that nature. But this one, soften it up by wearing some blues from the lightest to the darkest and adding that in. As a cancer, that also governs a period. It deals with the shades of green and cream and white. So you might want to add a little of that too. But th this year says cut back on the red a little bit. All right. So it's going to be a good year. By the way, your numbers are the nine, six, and three. And your best day is always on a Tuesday and a Thursday and a Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Joe Bryan says, I will not look at Ra, my father, in the eye because I have faith in him. I'd say everybody should take the suggestion that Joe Bryan is saying, don't look Ra, the son, in the eye. Not during that that 68-minute period. That's when things are going to get a little, you know, little kind of crazy. And I need to thank uh, Savannah Walter. Thank you, Watler. Thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate that. And you know, you didn't give your birthday, Savannah, but let me tell you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that you don't look your age. I don't know, even know what you look like, but I know you don't look your age. Because the reason why is I'm looking at a lot of numbers that represents youthfulness. So you either don't look your age, feel your age, or act your age. You've got a lot of ones in your name that tells me you're very assertive. See, this is what I'm going to teach in terms of career, how to make this for a living to help people, help themselves. You help yourself, you help your neighbors, but it tells me you don't take orders well and you need to kind of have some of your own. So when I do that, that's 10, uh, 20, 30. I'm trying to do this in my head right quick. Uh, but I know this, Savannah, uh, you are very active, very energetic, and you have the most interesting eyes, particularly the left eye more so than the right eye too. And I'll explain all that, how I got to that too. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the donation. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of working backwards. Okay. So uh, this is interesting. This is from Dr. Woodhouse. How is this eclipse going to affect our economy or our market in April? I am just feeling the unrest in our universe. Well, Dr. Woodhouse, or as I affectionately call her, Yana, okay, because we got it like that, is that, you know, April, one of the most challenging times of the year, to the United States of this country is in the months of January, April, May, October, and November. I can put each of these months, I could tell you something very tragic that happened to from the stock market crash in October of uh, 1929 to the assassination of John F. Kennedy in November of 1963 uh, to uh, the, 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 the space shuttle that uh, that exploded in 1986, I think, in January, and then in April and May. And in fact, three presidents, all, now all the Aquarian presidents, too, died in the month of April. William Henry Harrison, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin Delano Roosevelt all died in the month of April, okay? And May, that's a whole nother situation there, too. But the point is that on the stock market, and not only the stock market, but your pocketbook, for example, I was out shopping today. They wouldn't let you use a credit card. You had to use cash. So you were, you were, I was surprised at people that were turned away because they were expecting to be able to use their debit or credit card and they could not use it. I only bought a couple of things like books. I like to read. Okay. I got issues. But the point is, I'm glad I had cash on me. So, so the stock market is, you know, they said the stock market is bullish and whatnot. Um, but the interest rates, the, there's there's a lot of things going on financially with this country that they're projecting, but it's kind of like the 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 uh, consumer index in terms of credit is like a couple of trillion dollars. I mean, it's just outrageous. People are deep in debt and whatnot. So this month is not going to help people. And I've tried to tell people since we're in an eight personal or eight universal year this year, don't deal with what you want. 
deal with what you need to have. You know, you might want a new car, but you need to handle your, your basic business. You need to keep your house afloat, your rent, your mortgage, and things like that. You might want a, 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 a diamond ring, but you need to kind of make sure that you can. It's about using some common sense. That's all I'm saying. Um, and for those of you who will do that, you will be the beneficiaries by the time this year is over. But for you who are trying to keep up with the Joneses, trying to impress your neighbors, trying to impress your friends with clothes and stuff you can't afford. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I saw an interesting thing the other day. There was something <laughs> where the guy was going to give this woman a Louis Vuitton bag. And as he was about to hand it to her, there was a guy that ran by and snatched the bag and he went to chase him and come at the end of the chase. They were boys. And he said, listen, man, take that back. You know what I'm saying? He gave it a receipt. Take that bag back. That's what I'm talking about. The Louis Vuitton bags, that can wait. I'd rather you have a bag of about $10, a $10 bag with $1,000 in it than to pay a $1,000 bag with only $10 in it. So, you know, appearances is nothing. And which is why, if you notice, the wealthy dress in a very unassuming fashion, where those who are far less fortunate, we want to dress like we own the world. So maybe it's psychological. I don't know what the rule is. But I know this, we better use some common sense if you want to get past. And 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 you're not out of the woods because next year is going to be challenging too, to be very honest with you. All right. And so Mr. Cancer says it, it's happening 237 Eastern Standard Time. But in Texas, it's at 127 because they're in Central Standard Time. Okay. So they're at, so this again explains why you need to know what time and where you were born. So the astrologer can properly align where the planets were in the heavens at the time of your birth on this planet Earth. Okay. There is an art to this. Believe me. It really, really is. Okay. Um, this is from Nina. Nina five. It says a uh, birthday Thursday, uh, March the 28th coming up. All righty. Uh, what's today? 27th tomorrow. I wish saying happy birthday to you, but I ain't going to mess up your tomorrow. Okay. I'm going happy birthday, dear. That's all I can say, Nina. And um, so you're born at 3.07 a.m. So that means your your son is somewhere in the second house, I believe, in the house of possession, the house of Taurus. That's where your son is. It says, what does he look like, especially for career and finances? Well, you are in a three personal year. Three is ruled by the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of good luck, prosperity, expansion, the right connections, games of chance, legal matters, and things of that nature. You should have a ball. That's all I'm saying. This and three, or which is Jupiter rules, foreigners, foreign countries, foreign languages, and it also indicates neither because you've got a lot of youthful looking numbers in your name that more than likely, now, I don't know whether you're married or not. We, You ain't going to all that, but I'm saying, if let's say you're not married. I'm saying don't be surprised if some younger men are trying to hit on a sister up in there, okay? That's all I'm saying. Um, because all this I explained when I'm, I'm going to teach the course of, for making it a career, how you can explain to people. So women aren't made to feel guilty. If a younger man is attracted to them, we men, we can attract much younger women. It's expected. Uh, you women, y'all attract a guy nine months younger. I didn't want to talk all bad about you and call you out your name, but financially though, this is a good year because it rules not only good luck, but it's called the prosperity cycle. That means more than just the normal course of money. All righty. So anyway, anyway, and I'm going to have Dr. Yana back on my show soon too, to talk about this crazy economy so people can be prepared. So do try to keep a little cash around. Today was a perfect example of it. And, you know, because they were making it clear, cash only, cash only, cash, they were very clear. And what's happening is with these merchants, it appears, that they're being hit very hard with these fees that banks are charging them for using debit and credit cards, processing them. So some banks and restaurants, I mean, businesses and even restaurants are telling people, can you please pay us in cash so they can avoid those fees? You know, everybody, the banks are doing very well. We need to own some banks ourselves and we would be, be doing well too. Okay. Uh, this is Jeff Stone, uh, born October the 14th. So you are an air sign with an air number, which means you're always in your, Hey, Jeff. Okay. And then when I look at your birthday, it indicates that this particular year is a year that can bring some life changing effects in your life, all depending on how receptive you are 
things of that nature. Uh, there will be, I, so I know that we're in March, so March is kind of one of your oppositional periods. So if you've been going through a little rough spot, that will pass because your best months are always on this side of the summer is April, May, and June. And that's right around the corner. And then on the other side of the summer is in September, October, November. So whatever you've gone through in January, whatever you've gone through this month of March, you can take a breather. Uh, you got to get past April, though, with all this craziness going on in the heavens. Other than that, you got it. Um, but this is going to be a year of opportunity. And next year is going to even be better for you, too, uh, as far as relationships, health, money, property, things of that nature, going back to school, things of that nature. Your numbers are the five, six, and nine, and your best days are always on a Wednesday, Friday, and a Tuesday. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, this is an interesting question. Hi, would you be able to tell us if the name numbers are more important than the dates, date numbers? No, let me say this. The, the date numbers are more important because whatever the month, the day, and the year you're born in, you're locked in. People change their names, marital reasons, spiritual reasons, criminal reasons, philosophical reasons, all kinds of reasons. So your name can change. And in fact, there's an excellent book I have in my collection called The Incredible Dr. Matrix. And this numerologist was a guy that if he wanted to be a lawyer, he'd change his name to fit the description and the characteristic to be a lawyer. If he wanted to be an artist, he would also alter his name. So, so, but you can't alter your birthday. You can only fib about it. That's the best you can do, but you cannot, <laughs> you know. So the date of birth is far, far more important. It's, it's like the it's like the compass, it's like the needle on the compass that points north in the direction you need to go. The month, the day, and the year tells me your journey, the path you're taking from the womb to the tomb, from the time you get here to the decide to reach the other end of the rainbow. But during the course of your name can change. You know, you got nickname, you got pet name, you know, come here, June bug, come here, so and so and so and so, whatever the case is. The, everybody's got their little name things. Um, then then the most important name is when a woman marries. Normally, she will relinquish her maiden name that she was born into and adopt and pick up and move from that moment the name that she's about to enter into into the new family. This is why they will tell a woman about a couple of months after that, you know, you kind of change. She has. Because when you change your name, you change the frequency. So even Shakespeare says, what's in the name? And his response was everything. All righty. So uh, thanks. A great question. Okay, this is a uh, little magic. What's up, buddy? Um, that's right. He had a birthday on last week on the 22nd. So happy belated birthday again. And uh, Pisces rising, Aries sun, Cancer moon. Now, here's the thing about the Cancer and the Pisces. That's water. And water represents feelings and hunches and intuition. And Pisces is known as the psychic sign of all the signs in the zodiac. So that means that you would do best following your hunches, following your feelings. And I hope I said thanks for the donation, by the way. That would be very, very important to you. So tap into your intuition. And during this crazy month that we are having uh, coming up for April, it will be best to kind of get into states of meditation and reflection and prayer and giving thanks and uh, considering where you're going. Because when I looked at this year, you, you're going through a period of adjustments, to be honest. You enter, you've entered a sixth personal year. One of your major opposition numbers is the number six. Now, it's not bad, but if you understand how to do, it's like me telling you, man, it's going to rain real heavy tomorrow. You know, you ain't going to go out there without no umbrella or no raincoat or something. And this is all I'm saying to you. So it's not about being paranoid. It's, you can't hide. That's why Joe Lewis said the champ, boxing champ, you can run, but you can't hide. You can't do that. You can't. But what you do is understand how to go with the flow. But it changes the way you appear. It changes your attitude. It changes your relationships. So if these are some of the things you want to do, it would be to your benefit. That's for sure. But your key numbers are always the four, one, and nine. And your best days are always on a Sunday and a Tuesday. All righty. Thank you, man. And thanks for the donation, Little Magic. I really appreciate that. Uh, this is Molding Clay. February the 20th, a male. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Although you are a male, you get along better with women. You know, you would do the reverse as mom may be. The comic says that the only thing a woman could do for her is bring her a man. Well, the only thing a guy could do for you is really bring you a woman. And if you look at how some of the things have happened in your life, almost always has been an influential woman that has helped you over the hump to help you get a place, to find a job, to do this or that. And I'm not just talking about your mother. 
or your aunts or your sisters or your grandmother. I'm talking about women in general, which is why to some degree they wind up being your blessing and your curse. Some women who actually love you and then some women, if they can't have you, ain't no other woman can have you. I don't know how y'all think like that. I'm not, I'm not talking about all you women. Of course, all you women don't think like that, but some do from what I've been told. Okay. Anyway, your key numbers are always the two, the seven, and the three. And your best days are always on a Monday and a Thursday and a Friday in that order. And this year, you're in a three-personal year. You're in a good luck cycle this year, and it rules Pisces. Although Jupiter has been reassigned to um uh, Neptune, but the original rulership of your sign is Jupiter. So be clear with that. And Jupiter always represents good luck and prosperity and expansion and growth and connections and this, that, and the other. So this is going to be a very busy year for you. Thank you. Uh, this is Ariel Taylor, uh, April the 12th. And um, she is a fire sign. Ariella. Okay. I'm sure this is a female. You are a fire sign with a fire number, which means you are a kind of person that is very proactive. A person just can't talk and, you know, say, yeah, like, yo, boy, I got this slick car. Because you want to know we need to get in this slick car and, and drive around the neighborhood and see what's going on. Okay? You will call them on it. So I would tell any guy that's dealing with you, Ariella, don't take don't, don't take no stuff. She don't play. But But then sometimes you appear to be dictatorial, but you're not. Your attitude is you do what you're supposed to do, and I do what I'm supposed to do. But if I got to do what I'm supposed to do and then try to do what you're supposed to do at the same time, we're going to have some problems. So if you know that, it's going to be good. You happen to be in a six-personal year, which is good to fall in love, fall out of love, lose weight, go for a makeover. So it tells me you've been working on your hair, change your hair since maybe about September, October of last year, or just as recent as maybe last month or so. But you have been about a change. And with your birthday coming up around the corner, being in a critical cycle, Mercury being retrograde on the first, the eclipse taking place on the eighth, it means take it easy until such times. Thank you. Your lucky numbers, by the way, are the three, nine, and six. And your best days are always on a Thursday, a Tuesday, and a Friday. Thank you. All righty. Uh, this is uh, uh, Atima that's born uh, uh, September the 5th. Well, your birthday indicates that you are an Earth sign with an air number. But what's interesting, five rules the planet of Mercury and your sign rules the planet of Mercury. And since Mercury is about to go retrograde by this time next week on Monday the 1st, it tells me that you have to be a little bit, you will do better than most because Mercury is your dominant planetary ruler and five, which is the ruled by the planet Mercury is their dominant influence as well. So you will likely to do better than most. However, you're in a four personal year, which means you're going to have to hit the brakes, keep some boundaries, some restrictions around you, and don't get too carried away. I would tell anybody who is dealing with you romantically or otherwise to give you some breathing room. Don't be clocking you. Don't, you know, don't be all up under you, you know, like where you going and looking over your shoulders every five minutes. I mean, if, if, if not, you will disappear. Uh, they used to be saying back in the old days, I'm going out for cigarettes and they never come back. OK, so you don't want to go out for no cigarettes and not come back. I can tell you that. But your key numbers are always the five, the nine and the six. And your best days are always on a Wednesday and a Friday and a Tuesday. OK, thank you. That was fun. All righty. All right. Let's see what we got here. Hold up. My man, how you doing, boss? <laughs> This is my man here, okay? And get the likes up. He's the Aries. He got me straight. His birthday's coming up next month, too. Brother Chillop, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Thank you. I am so blessed with all of y'all. Y'all are so supportive, and I thank you very, very much. And I'm not talking about donations. I'm talking about the fact that y'all would take your valuable time out of your valuable space and day to come and listen and tune in and stuff like that. So... So he got me straight and ever since then. We, we've been like brothers, okay? That's how I roll with, with Brother Locke. And so it's a chill out, I should say. So anyway, you got a birthday coming up. So we will be one of the first to wish you happy birthday from the Live with Lloyd family, all righty? And I think his birthday is the 18th, which means he's a nine, six, and three. Anyway, okay, let's see. Now, Molden Clay says, I forgot them on a Monday, but I think I read you uh, earlier today. So I think we're good. I think we're good. All righty. Yeah, see, so many people come in and sometimes I can't, I can't get to everybody. Um, 
Cosmic Sunflower, greetings. Date of birth is the 6th of April, which is next month. How do I navigate and master a nine personal year? Mm, it's very easy. Nine is your secondary number. Your key numbers, according to my a Star 8 app, is the 6, the 9, and the 3. So that means Friday, Tuesday, and Thursday are always your best days as a rule. Oops. I see I got the sign that if I, if I, okay, good, I charged my, my, I was about to be disconnected. And you don't want to be disconnected on the best part. Anyway, so this particular year for you, you happen to be in a nine personal year. So being in a nine personal year, it's about manner. See, nine is about, see, people always associate nine with endings, letting go, cutting your losses, get rid of this toxicity, negative people, things like that. But it also means manifestation, making your dreams come true. So things that you put on the back burner, things you put on hold, things that have been denied you, you're in a year now where you can make those things happen. And that's why I like uh, Miss Kimberly's show called Manifest on Purpose. If no other time to manifest on purpose, my friend, this is the year to do it that you're in right now. Okay. And also at the same time, a third part that they very talk about is it represents long trips, especially somewhere in July, going somewhere where there's the sand, the sea, and the sun. But your travel months was back in January, then one is coming up in May, one is coming up in July, then one is coming up in September and October. Those are your travel months looking ahead. All righty. Um, so we will be one of the first to wish you happy birthday. It's going to be a crazy month you're going to have. So kind of keep your celebrations within limits. All right. And just take it easy because you have more than enough time. And then see nine, the personal psyche you're in is ruled by Mars itself. And Mars is an assertive, aggressive, sometimes argumentative, confrontational planet. So and with Mercury retrograde, this is when people get into dumb arguments. And they're trying to figure out what they argue over. And it was much to do about nothing. Okay. Um, things like that. So don't do, just take it easy during your birthday month, all right? And you'll be fine. Okay, thank you. But your numbers are the six, nine, and three. Okay, uh, this is Rena Rogers. I'm going to take a couple more. And um, she's January the 7th, at which means this is perfect because they are a water sign. Excuse me, they are an earth sign with a water number. So when I see a combination of earth and water, that's anything you grow on God's green earth. There's a combination of rich soil that you put the seeds in, then you water it, and then you got to let time <laughs> bring it to harvest, okay? So that's normally the formula for that. So it's the seeds, the time, and the harvest. And once you do that, you, you're well on your way. And because you're in a seven personal year this year that matches your date of birth, it simply means for you not to chase after things because seven represents the law of attractions which is why it would be good for you to get into meditation or prayer or reflection or grabbing those quiet moments to kind of, as they say, hear yourself think, okay? That's what this is about. And so this is a, not a year to chase, but to magnetize. So when the elders used to say, let go and let God, that's the cycle that you're in. So instead of chasing after money, chasing after love, if that's the case, just see what you want on the mental screen of your mind and God will do the rest because seven is magnetic. And that's what God does when you call upon him in the proper way, not in the way of chasing him and demanding of him, but throwing it out there in the best of interest and let your intentions be honorable too. And if so, you do very well, but you got a mind of your own and your numbers are the seven, two and eight and Mondays and Mondays and Saturdays are always your best days and Friday. So I would say Monday, Friday and Saturday are your best days. Okay. Cinematic brother, I've had a pleasure of, uh, <clears throat> Thank you for the donation. I had the pleasure of actually talking to him during a session. And he is born August the 20th. And thanks again for the donation. So, but this year is a year where he's in a nine personal year. So nine is one of the challenging numbers to the number two. <clears throat> Here's what I mean. Nine is assertive. Nine is action oriented. Nine is not known to have no patience. They're not going to sit around. It's like, okay, guys, what are we going to do? That's why I call them they proactive. They don't they don't sit on their rusty dusty. They get out there. But the birth number you're born in is just the opposite. Patient, considerate, understanding. Well, if you feel a little feisty this year, this may explain some of that. that, you, that they'll say, man, you off your grind. Normally you have a little bit of patience, but you ain't got no patience for eating nobody's mother. Okay? That would make all the sense in the world to me. So it just means take it easy. But it's ironic that you're born at 7, 11 a.m., which means your 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 
your moon, I mean your sun, is sitting in the 10th house. That's the house of career. You can't get no higher than that. So, and then you're a Leo too. So what color is best to wear in your case? Green, cream, and white is the sign to the number two, which governs the moon. And those colors such as yellow and orange and red belongs to the sun. So if you can blend those combination of colors together, you should do pretty well, okay? And the year looks like you, dreams come true, but avoiding people that want to argue and fuss and fight and fume. Don't drive too fast if you got a car. The, the building's gonna be there when you get there, man, all right? You might be a little late, but the bill's still gonna be there. I'd rather you do that than you wind up in some kind of accidents because <clears throat> the cycle of the nine rules, accidents and injuries too. And so instead of rushing somewhere, you, you rush to the hospital. It's those kind of things. But your key numbers are the two, seven, one, and four. All right, I'm going to do just a couple of more. And I got to I gotta thank all of you. Um, um, okay. All right. Um, uh, uh, Benefits Ross says, uh, you said the newsletter. Because I'm putting out the newsletter and getting that ready for for uh, April, but I've also added another component to it too, about the sun right around this time is so on point. I can only imagine what a reading would do. Well, what you can do is you can reach out to me and we can set something up. Just go to link tree forward slash numbers in you, and we'll make that happen. And um, but actually, a lot of you are my inspiration. Y'all are so encouraging. It just motivates me to be the best too. Now, this is Savannah. I read Savannah. I read Savannah Watler. I remember the name. I, I think I missed the next the name. But anyway, so let me go back to let me do one more thing. Okay, see, I almost missed James Johnson. Uh, James, you are the same. You are a fire sign with a fire number. That tells me everything. Fire represents, you know, you know how it takes something warm to get up and then when it's fire you can't even sit on the, the, the engine of a car the hood of a car or can't you can't hold a, a pot when it's too hot well that's the kind of energies you have my friend then you happen to be in a three personal year too when i added the month and day you're born to this year in question that means this is a year for you to grow to grow exponentially to expand to work on a new and improved you this is going to be a great great year for you i tell you james johnson and then it's so interesting because the name Johnson adds to 33, the name James adds to uh, 14 or 5. So that tells me right there that this is your year to raise your consciousness, man, to really, you've always been a conscious raising brother, and you would do well in communications, and you would do well in travel and things of that nature. Um, but this year is all about growing. It's all about having some fun, and it's all about making some money. Man, you would be my new best friend, okay, like that. Financially, it's going to be a great, great year for you. And I, and so what I do is sometimes when I can't tell people how the year is going to be, I'll go back to the past. So you're going to go through this year what you went back in 2015, also 2006, and I'll go back to 1997 too. Because all those years added up to the year of the eight that found you in a three personal year, which was the year where you expand and you grew and you blossom. And I like uh. All of his, all of the initials of his name starts with a J. Uh, and it's interesting. So if I did JJJ, that would add up to three, which governs the sign of Sagittarius and all these leadership numbers too. And I got to be honest, uh, you're born in 1965, but you could say you was born almost like 1978, 1980. You don't look your age at all, which is why you will attract much younger women, which is none of my business, okay? Anyway, but thanks for the donation. I appreciate that. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, this is interesting. Locust last, she said, I got into a car accident by a drunk driver on 3 3 in the 3, 3 a.m. hour. Uh, can you help me understand that 3 3 3 dynamic? I'm sorry, I keep asking more questions. That's why, that's, listen, um, that's why you need a consultation or join a course to learn how to do this. But I think it's interesting on the third, on the 3 3, I, I don't know whether it was this year. Um, I would assume it was at three in the morning. And um, well, here's what's interesting. Triple threes add up to a nine. Nine is the number of injuries and accidents. Nine also indicates that subconsciously there was at the point if you had this accident, you would think about terminating something, getting rid of something, putting something behind. Consciously, you may have thought about maybe manifesting something, working on a project that you want to come true. 
or they could have been an Aries or Scorpio in your life involved with you or Leo, or they could have been born on the 9th, the 18th, or the 27th as well. But anyway, I'm glad you're out in one piece. And in fact, that you could even write this to let us know that you're okay. All righty. So let me take about two more and I'll get off this. <laughs> okay, this is uh, Angie, a uh, female. Thanks, Angie. Uh, her name also, she's born in 1966, but she could say she's born in 1976. She could save about a good seven to 10 years off of her age with no problems at all. Um, you are a water sign with an air number, sensitivities, yet logic and the power of deduction. Uh, you should get into writing. So I wouldn't be surprised as a young girl, you wasn't in the poetry, dance, theater, uh, some form of communication, business, science, commerce, import, export, stock exchange, especially the import, export, since you're doing a lot of things by sea, uh, things of that nature. It also indicates uh, you don't like repeating yourself too many times as well. And so with that, I tell anybody in your life, please pay attention to Angie when she's speaking to you, okay? When I did your name in my head, that's 10, 13, 14. Really? If I'm not mistaken, that's 10, 13, 14, 15. So it tells me from your name, Angie, one of your parents is either Taurus or Libra, are born on the 6th, the 15th, or the 24th, and you always like to be a work in progress, going to school, this, that, and the other. And I'm going to take, I guess, two more, I guess. Okay, I'm going to just take two more. I, and then I got to get off the phone. I mean, off, off the show. Um, uh, this is Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Uh, she is October 17th. So her numbers are the eight, six, and three. Now, here's the thing. She is an air sign with an earth number. So she's logical, yet very pragmatic in her logic and powers of deduction. 17, eight is definitely the business number. Any a person born on the eight, 17, or 26, and this year is the year of the eight, I'd say this is your year to make money. Plus, you're in an eight personal year. Okay. So it tells me something, Vanessa, is happening with property. Something's happening with past, your past. So there's going to be kinds of, there's going to be events that are going to bring reunions where you haven't met people in a long time, like weddings and Christians and funerals and uh, family reunions and things like that. But there's going to be a lot of events taking place this year. It's going to reconnect you with people you haven't heard from, college friends, all those kind of things from your past. Uh, doing some growing up. Yes, I know you're a grown woman already, but when you're in an eight cycle, that is the number of philosophy and you become philosophical even more so what you've been doing on life stage and why and what does all mean and how does your life point for the future and things of that nature. Plus you end your year in a master number 22 year because 1966 adds up to 22, which means you should end your years or last days on this planet on a very high elevated note. It's just the master number 22. It represents the master builder laying the cornerstone of foundations. I'd say you were probably going to leave a, a nice legacy behind for those that uh, uh, that will come after you. All righty. And I'm going to read Taylor B. And one more. And then I've got to go. Uh, August the 20th. That's interesting. Except this person is born in 1979. And so what it simply means that you happen to be in a nine person year like cosmic uh, cinematic, a uh, brother cinematic, I believe, who's born on August 20th, too. So that means to not rush yourself to be a little bit more patient, which is your natural innate ability anyway, since you're a two, which is the number of patients. But because you're going through a nine personal year, you might feel antsy. You might feel you ain't got to, you know, I need to repeat myself too many times with this. And uh, that might be the thing that you have to be more mindful of. But your key numbers are the two, seven, one and four in your best days are always on a Sunday and a Monday. Alrighty. Um, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to take this the last one. It's Rachel Clark. Blessings. Enjoy the reels. Okay. Um, they're born February the 8th. And they said, thank you. And could they get a reading? Yes. Okay. I wish I could read everybody. Believe me. Um, my moderators, I'll be, I'll be, I don't argue with my moderators. I try to convince my moderators and they said, man, you be staying on here all evening long. So I do understand that. Uh, but anyway, you're in a nine person year also. Uh, happy belated birthday, Aquarian. Aquarius eight. Aquarius is a sign that's misunderstood. Eight is a number that's misunderstood. You happen to be in an eight personal year, which means even more so. 
So what happens is I've noticed with eight people or Capricorns and Aquarius, it's because Saturn is the original rulership of the sign of Aquarius, that the more they try to make an impression, the worse it kind of gets. So don't make an impression, just be yourself. But because you happen to be in a nine personal year this year, it means focus on some of the things that you need to let go. Focus on some of the things you want to manifest for yourself and what intentions are and things of that nature. And focus on taking some trips somewhere as well, too. And there should have been a trip just before your birthday. One is coming up in May, especially in the second week and the last week of May. Then another one is coming up in July, and that will be in the second and the third week. Then another one will be coming up in September in the first week. And then one more will be coming up in October, which will be in the week of the last, the 22nd to the end of the month. One of those months and during one of those weeks, you're likely to do some traveling. And so since this is the age of Aquarius and this is the age of women, Rachel, I'd say you should have a very good year. And the year of the eight too, man, you'd be my new best friend too, okay? So everybody, I got to thank you very, very much. Um, I do enjoy this very much. And by the way, you know what? People say you never put up your banner. So I'm going to surprise everybody. This is my banner. Okay, let me let me do this. Let me do something. Let me take it off of uh, the scroller, save it, and do this. Okay, this is it here. All right, so everybody, I do want to thank you very, very much for, uh, for joining me this evening. Thank you for those who stayed extra. Uh, I really do enjoy this, as you can tell. Uh, for those coming up, please wear these glasses. Don't don't be playing around. Don't be cute. Now you can be cute, but if you find yourself you can't see like you're supposed to the next morning, again, y'all should have tuned into the show, righty? So that's about all I can tell you. So uh, let me take my banner off. Okay, hope you got that. So I must tell you that the sponsorships today was brought to you by King Simon, my buddy, who's having an event in New York City on April the 13th and April the 14th uh, at Nicholas Brooklyn at 1396 Fulton Street in Brooklyn. That's a that's an amazing store. You cannot go into this store and not buy one thing. I dare you, I defy anybody to say, I'm just gonna buy one thing and don't come out of there with a whole lot of things. It's like going into one of these Walmarts or Target type of places. It's the most engaging uh, facility and I would advise everybody to go there also, I do want to thank Miss Kimberly for Manifest on Purpose. And yes, I've taken her term of Manifest on Purpose because you should do it with a purpose and not just willy-nilly. I also took a line from her, the God in me loves the God in you. So, okay. So, you know, I'm not original all the time. But when I see things that make you want to manifest because we all have the God within us, all of us. That's why I try to treat every human being I meet with the God within them. Okay. But we're so taught that we're losing our spirituality. There's a lot of things that, which is why this world is probably the messed up the way it is. But I'm saying that the God in me loves the God in you, and it should always be that way. But it is sponsored by that, uh, sponsored by Miss Kimberly. And finally, I need to thank Jazz Aphrodite, uh, who always sponsors the show. She's the best of the best. And uh, her book is out, her master class. She's doing it on her birthday. So I guess that's a birthday present to her. And she will be on talking about that on the 15th of uh, April. She will show her book where you can see it. And before I go, for those of you who've been asking me, I decided to do a workshop. I'm going to explain how I do what I do. And my goal is to teach you to learn the art of numerology as a career, how to make it a living. And since my, my courses are sold on every continent on this planet, it tells you that if you learn properly, no matter where you go, you can always make a living. And now you don't even need a translator because all you got to do is just translate. You know, you got these phones. Now we do this translation. You talk into it and then talk back to the person you're talking to. So that's it. But in to, but to sign up for the class, uh, learning the art of, uh, of a numerology as a career, please go to this site right here uh, that you're interested. I will send out a form very soon within the next uh, week or so and uh, fill it out. And I'm just selecting just a very few. Um, that's, that's a very few, that's all. Cause I want to give you my undivided attention. And I figured that if you're going to make that kind of investment in yourself and your time, I want to be the best that I can be for you. Everybody, I do want to thank you. By the way, uh, 
my newsletter is almost over but if you missed it you you know it's one thing to read it but if you go to this site you can actually hear the narrative of what i said because i said so much more than what you read in the newsletter and you'll see when you get there just click on the description and all of your respective signs will come up and you just go to your sign or the sign of whoever you're interested in or the sign of person you can't stand all that is up to you but anyway i want to thank you very very much i enjoyed uh that's call it running my mouth <laughs> but i love what i do i mean i do i do and i love helping people and i need to thank all of you who made it possible to stick with me all this time i've done almost close to 300 shows and i have to thank you for the bottom of my heart and for those people who are recently donating i do appreciate you but i would be remiss if i didn't stick with the people uh, who have stuck with me from Jump Street too? You can't, you can't just throw them by the wayside. No, you can't. I'm not going to do that. Anymore. Everybody, have a nice day and a great weekend, and be careful. Okay.